Hey, Lawrence, how are you doing, sir? Good, thank you. First of all, f fabulous job on the movie. I really enjoyed it. It's interesting. I watched it last night, and I went to sleep, and I woke up with, I, I had the weirdest dream last night, and I think it was attributed to this film. But thank you for that experience. But first question I have for you is, where did the concept of Black Bear come from? It's interesting that you ask, um, because it came, it did come from a dream in the first place. And you're the third person who's told me that uh, in the past couple of days, that they had weird dreams or couldn't sleep after they watched the movie, which I don't know if that's a recommendation to people, because probably people want to get a good night's sleep. But um, yeah, the, um, I, you know, I had a couple of things floating around in my mind. Uh, one is that I had been working a lot um, in Hollywood as a, as, a, as a screenwriter for hire, um, working with studios, networks, and production companies, and um, working in a more commercial and conventional idiom. And I, I had a bunch of money saved up, and I felt like, okay, um, now's the time where I can finally do something more creative, more to my personal taste, um, and with nobody looking over my shoulder. And... Um, so I knew I wanted to do something, you know, fresh and uh, exciting. Um, I also knew that I wanted to work with Aubrey. I had done a TV show with her uh, in the months before I started writing this and uh, gotten to know her a little bit. We talked about our lives and I saw a side of her that I never really saw in, I hadn't seen in the previous uh, work that she'd done. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of explore that with her. Uh, and uh, also then a friend of mine showed me a, a, a bunch of cabins that he, his family owned around a lake in the Adirondacks. And he was like, you should set a movie here. So I was like, okay, I got these three things. I know that I kind of want it to be um, uh, something simple so that we wouldn't cost a lot of money to do and that we'd have a good chance of raising the money to make it. So I knew, you know, I was looking at small cast, one location, but I didn't really have any ideas of what to do. And in fact, I was writing an entirely different script. And then one night I had this dream that um, I don't remember exactly what happened in it. It was similar to what happens in part one of Black Bear. And uh, that was kind of my jumping off point for the film. Um, I don't, the plot wasn't as developed in the dream. And I think some strange stuff happened that I couldn't replicate in the movie. But, uh, but basically the vibe of the dream uh, was the inspiration for part one. That's so fascinating. Now, each character is kind of wrestling with their inner demons. Can you talk to me about what each character's struggles might be, whether they be insecurity or, uh, you know, feeling abandoned, essentially? Yeah, you know, I think that, um, man, it's going back a while. Uh, you know, I, I wrote this thing in 2017, and um, I, uh, I made it, in, well, I made it not that long ago. Uh, in terms of inner struggles, you know, I think that all of the characters are lost in their own way. I think that Aubrey's character has gone through something traumatic, maybe something like you see in the second part of the movie. Uh, at, the, at the start of part one, she's lived through some heartbreak. Right. And um, I think she finds herself uh, with, with, uh, with this couple, the, the man in the couple, his dreams haven't, haven't come true. Uh, he thought he was gonna be a rock star and make, make a lot of money and have an exciting life touring around. And instead, um, he's found himself uh, with a girlfriend he's knocked up and the, uh, the financial remuneration aspect of the music world has, has disappeared. Um, and I think, his girlfriend is uh, stuck with this man who uh, she loves and is having his child, but knows that he's unsettled. Um, so, so that's kind of a fertile ground for, for the trouble that you see in the movie. Well, this movie has a great script, and obviously you wrote and directed a great direction as well. But Thank the you. cast really stands out. Aubrey, Chris, uh, Sarah, they all feel so authentic. Can you talk to me about um, how you were able to work with those actors to bring uh, those characters and making them three-dimensional on screen? Uh, I can't take too much credit for it. Um, mostly I, I try to stay in the way and be there to help if they need it. Um, I, I met with them the weekend before the movie started and periodically over the course of the film, whenever we had a second to discuss the script, to make sure that we were all on the same page, that they knew what the scenes were about. 
uh, and um, that they didn't have any lines to say, that they didn't feel comfortable saying. I think it's really important to, to alter your script and give, give your cast freedom to say the lines in a manner that that would be natural to them um, and not rigidly stick to my every period or um, uh, my exact words, as long as the meanings of the lines are, are clear and consistent. So um, I was, basically I just tried to stay open to the things that they were bringing and trying to make them feel encouraged and supported and that if they were ever confused that I had the answers that they needed. But I never tried to um, impose uh, my interpretation of the scenes on them before they, they uh, started to do them. Um, now, yeah. th this, this film is very meta and, and it, it's crazy because I used to work as a PA and production coordinator. So it gave me a little bit of like, I felt like I was back on set again. Mm -hmm. But uh, with, uh, with your experience with working with crews, where did some of these uh, characters even in the crew come from? Like the first AD having explosive diarrhea or you know w the, the conversations that you have with the makeup artist seem so authentic. Can you talk to me about uh, maybe your personal experiences that may have informed some of those characters? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I've made, uh, I've made about, I've made, I've direct, written and directed four films and I've uh, produced and written or acted in some combination of those things on four of my wife's films. So we've really um, done a lot of work together and uh, what strikes me about film sets, particularly indie film sets, is that comedy and tragedy are constantly mixed together because you have this very high stakes situation. You're racing against the clock with no money. Um, the situation always feels really desperate and your body just doesn't cooperate. So the, the stomach trouble that the AD is suffering from comes from my own life and my own stomach troubles. I have... Uh, been known to have irritable bowel syndrome when I'm under stress and that you know, film set is uh, very stressful. <laughs> uh, and just, just, just the idea that there's always something funny going on on set and there's always something stressful going on on set was what I brought to it. And it's interesting, a lot of the things that happened on set uh, in reality also happened in the movie and, and uh, so, there was a mirroring going on. And I don't know if that's because the second part was an accurate depiction of any indie film set, but many of the, of the things you see people into walk, walking into glass doors, right. things getting spilled, uh, you know, cups getting left on the table that shouldn't be there. These kind of things are, are, are always, we're always happening in real life and in the movie. So it, it did get disorienting. You talked about wanting to explore another side of Aubrey um, when, you, when you met her. Uh, can you talk to me about what she brought to the role of Allison that maybe wasn't on the page? Um, it's interesting. Since the role was written with her in mind, uh, it, it, what she brought to it um, before it even started is evident in the movie. Um, you know, I, I don't really... Um, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that. I think that what she did was um, was you know marvelous, but uh, but I that's always what I thought she would do. <laughs> it's fair. So can you talk to me? Because you know what, I got elements of uh, one of my favorite movies is Mulholland Drive, and mm -hmm. there's certainly uh, bits of elements I felt in this film. Uh, can you talk to me about uh, the approach to this movie? Because Part one and two are different, but uh, they, they do tie hand in hand. Can you just talk to me about um, where part two was inspired by? Um, well, part two was inspired, well, like I said before, I was looking for two love triangles in which Aubrey in one would play the home wrecker, and in the second, she would be the person who had her home wrecked. Um, so with that conceit, uh, I, I, I knew that I was looking for, for two of those. The first part came from a dream. And when I was looking for uh, a different story of a love triangle to pair it with, I remembered this outline that I wrote about 10 years prior. Uh, I think, it, yeah, it was about a decade prior to, to the writing of Black Bear. I remembered this, this um, outline that I wrote that um, 
that came out of me after uh, I, I had two conversations with um, members of a couple. There was an actress who was going out with the director and she complained to me about how much she resented this director for never putting her in his films. And he in turn privately complained to me that she was always hassling him to put her in his films and it made him feel like he was being used. Sure. Um, and I thought that's a really interesting dynamic. I wonder what it would be like if he put her in a movie and tortured her so he was basically passive aggressively saying, okay, fine, I'll put you in a movie, but I'm gonna make your life a living hell. Um, there was something funny, both funny and bleak about that idea. And um, an outline kind of poured out of me in an afternoon. And then I put it in a notebook that sat on a shelf for 10 years. And then I thought, oh, this is exactly the story that I should pair part one with. Um, and I thought at first, oh, I can make it the backstage drama of the film that we just watched. But then I started to feel like that would kind of ruin the dreamlike atmosphere of part one that I had cultivated. So I decided to work against that and come up with several different interpretations about how the two could be connected. I thought it'd be interesting to leave the viewer with many questions in mind about what the connection between the two was, of which there are many answers, none of which I would say is superior to another. And I love films like that. And it's funny because I just watched this film again this morning just to see if I can pick up on more things. Amazing job on the film, Lawrence. I, I really love this film. Uh, Thanks, thank man. you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate uh, you talking to me.